Well, it's a bitterly cold easterly wind. I'm really hoping for something other than a whiting as normal this time of year. Uh, as you can see, this is like a traditional Sussex beach here with the groins on either side. We went down to Brighton the other day and I didn't have a sniff of a fish. I'm really hoping that those place have spawned and they're coming back in uh, to feed up on hopefully our lugworm here. So it's the second time in a row I've gone down to Brighton and not, not caught a fish not even a whiting the last two trips. The water had been very, very clear as you can see here. I would have expected maybe a place, but no, uh, nothing much being caught near Hastings. So we're moving a little bit further west uh, to see what Eastbourne's got to offer. Yeah, it's good to be out, but it is a bit nippy. I think I need a warmer coat, don't I? So off to a beach near Eastbourne. Always faced with that little dilemma about where to fish. It hasn't been fishing well in Hastings. I'm just trying to find the right path to take uh, or whether you stick closer to home. So decided to fish near Eastbourne today. Well, as you can see, I've set up a little bit further back we've got the tide coming in I don't want to be constantly moving back everything it's particularly hard when you're filming as well so as you can see we've got the space to ourselves don't want to be snagging on the groin so I'll come a little bit further down tide of that one to the left Oh, it really is cold. We've got an easterly wind coming in. It's not particularly windy, uh, but certainly it won't get much colder this year, I don't think. Out there somewhere is something other uh, than whiting, I hope, I hope. A place would be nice today. So we're set up for place, multiplier on the braid. That's the Sonic AVX with the tapered leader. And then again, tapered leader, but with mono on the, um, Mag pen mag 525 mark 4 been really good this reel actually really good i've enjoyed using it um it doesn't fly it doesn't absolutely zip but it is quite a um but it's quite a reliable reel so far i've been quite impressed with that and these uh And these winches that tighten down on the rod so you can set where you want it really good sometimes i fish in the butt down position and we'll have a little bit of a practice at casting today as well i don't think the fishing is going to be tremendous but i just hope i can bring you something other than a whiting on camera so We'll see how we go. There we go, all set. So fishing with two rods. Do this continental one. Already my hands are starting to get a bit cold. And then the rig I've got in my hand here. And then just to get a good bait flow in the water, uh, the rig I've got in my hand is, uh, that's got one O hooks on it little bit bigger just to get a little bit of a bait trail almost on my swim today because it is quite calm out there not much of a tide running um, so that's called a three hook flapper I know you've seen that before little sequins and a stop knot on those bigger baits And then I'm going to do something different on the, the other rod. And it's always handy to have one of these. This is a clip. That way you can change baits. That way I can change the baits quickly, get them in. Also, also when it's so cold, uh, it's hard to tie all the knots all the time. A 
There we go. So a 125 lead, about four ounce, and then got a mixture of baits today. I've uh, got some live ones, nice wrigglers. We've also got, uh, and I'm going to mix and match, so going to mix and match these on the three hook flapper and then we're going to tip it with some squid as well. Another thing that's a bit tricky when it's cold. So slightly better than frozen these. Although they've been in the fridge a while. So you can see with the lugworm it's got two like a fat end and a thin end. Uh, the thin end is the tail and the fat end is the head. The more juices are obviously coming out of that fat a bit. Um, so you can go onto the hook that way. And then when you get to the tail, it's a bit easier to finish off the, the hook bait. And then you can nip that bit off if you want. I tend to leave it on for the sort of fishing we're doing today. A little bit more enticing maybe. Uh, or you can just do it the other way around so all the juices are coming out near the hook point. Always wipe your hand. Wipe my hand ready for the cast. So those don't need clipping on, we're just going to take those down. So this is a bit different, this is the Cascade rig, uh, means I can get a little bit more distance, just clip those baits on and we're actually going to, I'm actually going to, what am I going to do, I'm going to tip that with some frozen squid, uh, gives us a, maybe a little bit more chance of a place, something more beefier. So we've got the bigger lead as well which is 5 ounce ish and the cascade rig i mean we've covered this cascade rig in the channel quite a lot it just relies on those little hooks and the bottom snood goes onto there so as soon as that lead hits the water the whole the whole rig falls apart in a good way uh, we'll put some lug in there All right. So there we go, let's hope the whiting don't go for them, that's all clipped on. Now you can judge me on my half pendulum cast. At least it didn't snap off.
And I think we're actually getting a little, there's something going on on that rod on the right. The braid is very sensitive. That could even be a rockling at 100 yards. There's some weight on the line there. Let's have a little look. Nothing so far. I'm going to have to rebate. Tend to rebate every 20, 30 minutes, really. I'll try and make it as even as possible on the spool. A bit like a cotton reel, if you can. It tends to build up on either side, so you've got to be quicker on the sides. And then the leader knot will come through there, look. Try and make that quite even, and then you want it, you don't want it. What you don't really want is that ready to cast in the middle. I try and offset it a bit so it winds on about there. Well, let's uh, try something with some beads on. We're not getting anything. I think there's a guy up there who's got a whiting. Terrific. Um, but something with some beads on here might make a little bit of a difference. Still a three-hook flapper. Yeah, just see if this makes a difference. Because the tide is coming in now. The water's clearing up on the flood. Usually clears quite well on the ebb. Um, but... Maybe, maybe just a one watery place. That's all I want. Oh, it's not looking good. A little bit disappointed. It is winter fishing though. I mean, this is what happens. I did that, I did that stupid thing where I went online. I looked at everyone catching the place uh, a little bit further west in Brighton. And I thought, yeah, we must be able to get one. It's a little bit tougher. This far east, um, we're not catching as much. You get that lift into the weight and you can tell there's not a fish in there each time. Plus the cold. This is usually the point we give up. I'm not going to give up quite yet. Come on. And then, of course, you start thinking, well, maybe I should be fishing the ebb so a little bit frustrating having made a bit of an effort in this cold weather three hours so three hours in and no fish the only other thing I can think of uh, one thing you can always try is just do is take the um, I've taken the grips off that lead uh, and I'm just putting a nice big bow in the line and then just move it down tide in an arc. Um, it's got braid on it this, so I can feel almost every bump, let it slacken off, just bump it along down the tide. So I'm going to try a three ounce lead uh, and then drag that across, get that into the tide um, and almost retrieve the lure back and almost retrieve the bait back using a three ounce lead. Uh, let's see how far out I can get it. 
tide's moving left to right. Just wanna try. Give it a try anyway. We got something, yes. Ah, I don't want to lose it at the last second there. Well, we got something. Feel it come, yes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Well, ah, well, a little bit of perseverance, a place, lovely. Well, how often does that happen? Just about to give up and we get one. Now, this is a small one. You can tell a place, obviously it's got those beautiful orange spots on it. Lovely. But it is a little bit small to be keeping. Uh, we're not gonna get a good meal out of this one. And well, it's not too thin. Normally this time of year, they've just spawned. They've just spawned and they're you know quite watery and thin, but this is actually not too bad for for this time of year anyway, uh, but it's not a good size. So I'll have to go back. <laughs> Save the blank. Hey, <laughs> I've never been so pleased to see a, such a small fish and a place as well as we targeted.
So it was only a little place, but it really lifted my mood a bit. I thought I was going to be heading home without a fish. So another bait straight back in. Uh, that one was at real distance as well. I wonder if that's, I wonder if that makes a difference. But it's a funny thing fishing, isn't it? I was really just starting to feel a bit down on the whole thing, looking at these trawlers working offshore, thinking they're nicking all the fish. <sighs> and then we got one and we haven't blanked. It wasn't a whiting and it wasn't a rockling. Yeah, quite happy with that. <laughs> now, what I want next is a bigger one, one to eat maybe. I've got a feeling that water clarity really makes a difference with place. I don't think they're here in any big numbers, not yet anyway, but we do have a good early spring run here. Look at the clarity of the water. I mean, this is winter. So this is on the flood as well. And as we were saying earlier, place, and it seems to me that place are sight feeders. So obviously a clearer, clearer water, they're gonna see the prey and hopefully our lugworm. Ah. <laughs> Well, I just came across this little bit of snag gear. Obviously a danger to things like dogs, but more importantly, I might get some free lead out of this. Let's pull it and hopefully it won't snap. Right, dig a bit. There we go. Two ounce lead, is it? Three ounce lead. 